Hello everybody, welcome back to Wapleville. Welcome back to some more Star Wars Shatterpoint. So we did this one on the last stream over here, a little bit of object source lighting. This is part of what the plans and preparation box. This is actually the first first of the box sets where I kinda went with the same basing theme on all the figures. I just did this as a tutorial video. Right here again, same theme with those 3D printed hoodoo rocks because they're, well, they're really fun. Make a nice, kind of an obvious little theme right here. Got this nice little stair step of hoodoo rocks here. Not going to be any object source lighting this time around. Not on this guy over here. And you can see, uh, well, I got some reference pictures in the corners. Plus, we've got this. So, uh, who knows, maybe we do a little bit of the weathering dirt kind of whatever stuff on them. We'll see how that goes. We'll see how that works out. Obviously doing the... We'll just stick with the usual kind of weight-ish armor. Something like that. Now let me grab my brushes, which actually uh, happen to be over here. Yeah, let's grab some of these. We're going to need some brushes for our pre-glaze, which is going to be almost entirely, I think, uh, Van Dyke Brown with maybe a little bit of Mars black here and there. Yeah, maybe maybe a little bit of Mars black here and there. We'll get going on that. Hey there, Armored Wolf. Uh, I hope all the work is going well. Sorry to be bugging you while you have all that stuff to do. I'm just going to make Okay, I think we're good on our focus there too. So, I might need to throw a little bit more... Van Dyke Brown out here and Ormar is black. We'll see how that goes. Might need some more Asphaltum too because that's looking a little peaked there as well. Now this has a, a fair amount of thinner in it because, well, th this is absorbent. This is the bulletin board cork right here. Yeah, I might, uh, might just have to throw out some more of our Van Dyke Brown. Although this uh, might start to break down a little bit here as it as it's in our thinner. I will go less with the thinner when we get to the uh, Hoodoo Rock and then even less with the thinner when I get to the miniature because that's just plastic. That's just your usual plastic there, so not absorbent at all. And I might uh, might have to throw some some of the asphaltum out there. It's not like that's a staining color, so something I could definitely put in there at a later stage. And uh, we'll just kind of stick with the same Van Dyke brown, maybe a little Mars black on the clone the clone commando. That's what they actually are clone commandos. So again, whoops, oh well, I was more thinner than I was really looking to have, but that's okay. This is all super absorbent here anyway, so that, that'll that work out okay. I do have a second one of these. If I just really blast through this so fast, I can always get the other one going, and then I'll just... Uh, find other things that we can paint up on our stream just uh, I thought hmm you know what Let, let's see if there's really is oh look at this see how that doesn't look so quite so shiny and that's just after minutes because we're that's seven minutes since we first started putting stuff on there so I'm just gonna start taking away here uh, from the bulletin board cork and then uh, we'll work our way back around to the plastic figure so great to see you again Grant Oracle so yeah, Valfara, that fence now goes, it'll go to uh, four feet of air. It will be absolutely useless. And again, the uh, couple of screws, a few boards, would all have been good. Would have been a garage the exact same size. Ah, uh, okay, ah, uh, okay. Yeah, I was, I was going to say Valfara... Um, well, I know that, uh, the Jinx, when she had the crazy hip things happen with her computer, she did use her phone 
for streaming, and it didn't blow up, which was surprising, given the demands that, that streaming places on a device. And, uh, oh, actually, I was also, well, I was desperately trying to film the next video here. So that was, that's, that's one of these right here. We're going to be doing a lot of freehand on that. So, yeah, that is the next, it's the next uh, Vehicles Workshop series. Focusing very intently on freehand, less, less on the weathering. More on the, the cover and the freehand and that sort of thing. That's not too bad for staining right there, I have to say. That is not too shabby. And we'll be taking a variety of our, our radiant gray, that sort of thing. Uh, yellow pale for sure. So radiant gray, that would be the radiant violet and the radiant green combo together. I know where. Oh gosh, I could swear in the last stream we we're talking about. Uh, Someone was talking about the. Oh yeah, the zenithal stuff. And Grand Oak, I mean, is that not like a zenithal right there? Uh, so Velfer, I think the name of the sculptor is that evil one. And uh, well, let, let's put it this way: the one that I uh, printed out on the. Mono X was significantly better than the one printed out on the uh, Sonic Mini 4K. So yeah, I just I'm gonna have to unsign myself up or whatever you want to say from the Frozen mailing list because I think we're pretty much done with Frozen prod products here. Frozen foods one thing, but Frozen printers. Uh, I think it's time to say goodbye to those, right, uh, Grand Oracle? So again, doesn't that kind of uh oh well, where's our other oh, here he is. I mean that that is uh ten minutes ago. That's what this one looked like. Just gray Stino Res primer. Again, nothing more than just the, the pre glaze wiped away. Now well I need to put more of the uh Radiant violet out there, possibly, because that's looking a little peaked over there. So let's uh, let's get ourselves a little bit of the radiant violet. There. That's a. Uh, we like the paint to be dry, but well, that's that's pushing a little too far. Uh, but Grand Oracle, it's kind of a shame, right? Because it didn't have to be that way. That it, there were things that it was, was kind of good, until it wasn't, right? <laughs> I just, I, I that that's a little weird way to put it, but it's kind of it was okay until it was not okay, and then it kind of wandered into useless territory. I mean, that, that's setting aside the fact that you can't get any of the parts anywhere. I mean, I'm not wrong in thinking that, am I, uh, Grand Oracle? That just about anybody else, I mean, of course, any Cubic and uh, Elegoo, way, way, way easier to find. Yeah, Valfair, it was, it's kind of one of those printers that, uh, well... Like the Tiger 2. <laughs> the Tiger 2 had, uh, there was impressive things about it, but it was, in practical sense, not great. Now, Grand Oracle, the other thing that those printers, and of course I found this out the hard way, are prone to, is basically a little piece of, because the way it's designed, a tiny piece of dust can get down into that Z axis. And if you can't get that out of there, well, you're in the same predicament you were. You you have yourself a very expensive paperweight. And I really, uh, 
you know, while uh, you know, if I have a an evil layer someday when I'm a supervillain, uh, a three hundred dollar paperweight or a four hundred dollar paperweight, maybe I'll think about something like that. But right now, I'm I'm not as eager to invest in the uh, paperweights worth hundreds of dollars. Just work in some of those up. Look at that. See that pre glaze getting on the brush there? That's your pre glaze for you. And we, we wiped away a fair amount of it, but as you can see, still uh, plenty of that here. And of course, you can see that this is all mixing here. That's a mixing with that pre-glaze, just what we hope it does. Again, I wish I could have gotten another Mono X just, just to have around. Not for any other reason except as an emergency backup. It would, it would not be plugged in even. It would just kind of be there. Well, uh, kind of waiting whenever it was needed. All right, there's some of the S full time. We'll start to put that here. We're going to have that be a much warmer color here. Uh, well, Shezza, the, the TMM stuff can be a little, it can be a little weird for sure. Uh, even you know using things like well either on the acrylic side metal medium where is that right here ah so there's your acrylic version essentially that's that's uh, basically iridescent pearl white they they call it something else but that's pretty much what that is and uh, and the oil terms that's what I use whenever I'm doing the TMM stuff is iridescent pearl white for sure. Uh, I'm glad you were able to finish that off. So Drax, uh, I know <laughs> they were trying to get you to do the Malifaux thing, but uh, I know that, that the Malifaux stuff kind of, uh, well, there was a, a bit of a kerfuffle in the Malifaux community. So I, was, I wasn't sure if it was really still around or if it was one of those things where just, you know, the pockets of loyalists are still there. Or is it still... Uh, does it still have its popularity, I guess? Uh, Shizza, yeah, that was... Uh, someone, basically, we were at, at the game store, and they said, hey, if I use this and I mix this with a regular color, will that color become metallic? And I said, I have no idea. So I, I think he just let me try some of it, and, and that was... And I went, holy smokes, that was 2012, 2013 something like that and ever since that's that's what I've used if I want to do something that kind of has a metallic well the the TMM stuff that certainly is a big part of it uh, Grand Oracle you know I forgot that that was a that's a series 4 right I mean I have it sitting over here well maybe not the easiest thing to get to but I think that's a series 4 no, nope, can't quite get my hands on it. Now, what's the iridescent pearl white? Is that a three or a four? I say it's only a three. I mean, I say only a three with Williamsburg, but I think the interference colors are all fours. Ah, uh, that, that's what I thought. That's what I thought, Drax. Uh, now, now, Drax. Uh, uh, let me see. I was wasn't sure. I know that you had, you know, that the 40k armies already that you've been working on for a long time. Uh, with all of the, <laughs> I don't know what are you gonna call it, like version 10 point or version 10 2.0, or whatever it was, was we're gonna launch a whole new version of the game and then make a new version two weeks later. I just I don't know if that's what kind of effect that's been ha or if is it just kind of like people don't really care and it doesn't really matter. Uh, 
uh, you know what? I'm going to try and go a bit more on the, well, the neutral side here. We're going to take that uh, radiant violet, some of the fast matte white here. Maybe a little bit more of the fast matte white. There. Yep. So yeah, Drex, I, I figured between, well, the, <clears throat> you know, being at the, at the conventions and some of the other stuff, being really busy while trying to get ready for those, that you weren't maybe going to have quite so much time to get in games. Alrighty. Yeah, when, uh, I'm sure there's, I guess, would you say a, a better ballistic skill or something like that, maybe, for these guys as opposed to the others. Because, yeah, that that's really crazy, uh, right, Grand Oracle, how it just... Uh, now, I only ever had the one tube, so I thought, <clears throat> well, maybe, maybe that was just that one tube. But I guess, uh, I guess that's uh, pretty much all of them then. So I'm just going to darken that down a little bit. And then we're, well, oh, here, what the heck, I'll just leave that there. Mostly doing some indigo, a little bit of the uh, Van Dyke Brown as well. All right, so everybody, please check out the link that Shizza posted. And also, please give Shizza Gaming a follow. So, Shizza, hopefully uh, things are, are working out for you okay. And things haven't been uh, too too stressful of late. Uh, so, Grand Oracle says that, uh, well, they, they claim... That the newer lot's not going to have that same issue. Yeah, I, I won't be finding out myself, that's for sure. I have more than enough left, so... Actually, the last time I can remember using that was on the... was on the Necron series. Yeah, the Necron oil painting series. That was the last time I used that stuff. That's... Wow, yeah, that was a long time ago. Yeah, Shizza, I think I saw... Didn't, didn't you do an Instagram post about that? Oh, in the last week, I want to say. Yeah, I, I, I kind of thought... Yeah, I remember seeing something not too long ago. Yeah, Grand Org, it's a self-filling paint. No, that shows that as light. Okay, so we'll keep going with what we're going to do here. So let's start getting maybe something lighter out here. Uh, so on your Instagram story, I thought so. Shiz, uh, again, I'm, it, it's been a little wild and wacky here over especially the last week and a half. So I, I do apologize if I've lost track of uh, what's going on with folks a little bit. Now, yesterday really kind of was an off-the-rail, speaking of hype trains, type of a day. Kind of hoping that maybe, again, there was a solution presented today that at least keeps things going. Is it ideal? Definitely not. Uh, yeah, we'll g keep going with our light here. And we'll just, uh, we use a blending brush. Hashtag no layers. Hashtag no layers here. Yeah, she says again, sorry that, uh, I mean, that's been ongoing for so, so long there. I wish that that you could just kind of get a bit of a break from that. I mean, there's sometimes just enough of a break just to kind of, uh, Catch a breath, 
It's like, okay, fine, you're going to keep hitting me with this. At least give me a chance to catch some breath here. Uh, Grand Oracle, wouldn't you say that there was, for all intents and purposes, no difference between the Finch and Red and the Naphthol? So Grand, uh, sorry, Valfira, that was something I figured, uh, yeah, I wanted to make sure you knew that, that really, if you got Finch and Red, you have Naphthol and vice versa. So they're, they're pretty much the, the same thing there. Uh, Shiza, I'm really glad that that does, and boy, the one thing that's a bummer, Shiza, well, like, stuff that's been going on this this last week has kept me from joining the Pyro Club. I mean, that's literally, I would just like to do that, even, even if it's just once every couple of weeks. And I thought for sure I'd be able to do at least that, right? No, I haven't even been able to do that. And Grand Oracle, I'm fairly certain that your Naphthol Red is only a Series 2. And I'm pretty sure Fanchion Red is a Series 4. Yeah, if that's the case, you're looking at, well, kind of a double price difference, right? Naphthol Red Series 2. Uh-huh. So actually, well, technically that's like a 2... Like a hundred and twenty percent difference there. Uh, now the perline red, that's that's and more expensive than I thought it was. Uh, was a series three. Again, look at look at what we're doing here. We just slap that on there. <clears throat> now we're gonna grab ourselves a blending brush here. Maybe something even almost more like a bit of a micro blending brush. And we'll do that. Again, hashtag no layers. See, that's all kind of rough and nasty. Well, it was. Not anymore. Uh, and just uh, hopefully, of course, the painting is uh, it's sort of fun, too. I mean, geez, I don't want to use the word distraction. But sometimes that's kind of the best we can get, right? Is uh, just a distraction. Now, I was missed. Uh, uh, a little sad that I, I missed uh, Big Jim's. Uh, he did that real estate, questionable real estate. When was it last week, I think? I think it might have been last week tonight, actually. So again, that's it's starting to get the uh, getting our little shapes going here. Where's the this thing? Here we go. Remove that piece of fuzz. Uh, now, so bits around uh, for this weekend that's coming up. Uh, how, how's the work schedule looking? Well, and hopefully, no more of the 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 summer cold stuff. Not not exactly uh, summer anymore, but. I mean, we have had the fall equinox as it is, so a little bit more of my light in that armor there. Ah, boy, she's just she's sorry about that. You know, I wish that, uh, and we've talked about this a couple of times. The the anodyne machines. That was something, uh, and obviously that's uh, usually more of a neuropathy kind of a thing. But we were actually going to be using those for me because of the, uh, well, the muscle, the, the tear in my shoulder. We actually had to set up a rig with Kathy's anodyne machine so that I could actually use that. I mean, they're not the, they're not the, exactly the most pricey things ever 
And I, I think they, they do have the potential to make some difference. Oh, by the way, this is not as light as we can go with this, this light color here. I'm sorry that you're going to be working over uh, Friday and Saturday there, Bithron. Uh, Grand Oracle, that, that, uh, that, what is it, that evil one? I'm not kidding you, the vehicles there. And again, it's not just the Imperial stuff. There was a whole bunch of Xenos vehicles there. And the, the, the regular miniatures too, again, nothing to sneeze at. So that was that was color me impressed. That's for sure. So this again, not straight up white. It's got a little bit of the a little bit of the radiant blue in there. Trying to work a little bit more of the light color in there now. Like so. Yeah, the Star Wars Shatterpoint figures, Atomic Mass games. We've painted a lot of these things. It, it's kind of weird that the, the Shatterpoint things, I did not expect them to sort of be the thing that, I don't know, was that was one of the first things I think that I streamed coming coming back again. I could I could swear, I'm not, not entirely sure. But I think that could have been one of the very first things that I streamed uh, in, in that late May stream, the first one back. Again, uh, just sticking with this not quite white here. Oh, and by the way, we're 36 minutes in. Now, yeah, this, this said uh, no paint on it 36 minutes ago. So the remember well was it last night uh, or no Monday? No, that was our makeup Monday. So it was Tuesday. That's why it feels like it was just a couple of days ago because it was. But doesn't it uh, kind of feel, uh, Grand Oracle, like it's just never going to really reach universality? Not not like uh, your regular printers, right? That you would just plug in and just start printing stuff. There's just, uh, like we were talking about, too many variables, right? And like like you say, the well, one of those variables is the uh, slight trend towards toxicity. Uh, Grant Oracle, it was, uh, well, the other one, the one that we did on our tutorial video here, where did she go? This one, kind of similar to that. Oh, and again, there was no fluorescence used in this one. Uh, however, there was uh, ultramarine blue used, and I'm telling you, just take a look at, when you look at that video, look at how shiny that was. So, as it's 1022 now, I was still painting this area as of, I want to say, 2 something o'clock in the morning. Yes, uh, at 2 o'clock in the morning, which means... And then just go through, you know, obviously more like 18-ish hours ago. Eh, maybe maybe 19. In any case, no, but yeah, because it could have been like 2:30 or something like that. Let, let's just say 20. Let's just go with a very round number. Even as long as 20 hours ago, that was really, really, really shiny. Uh, so Grand Oracle, uh, I don't, I'd have to, of course, I don't have it here, unfortunately, to compare it. That It's at the place, the mural place. I've got to bring that back. But that's the uh, the Windsor Newton uh, Ultramarine Blue. I could swear that was very shiny. But the Williamsburg version is ultra matte. Uh, look at that. Look at that. It's starting to get some edges here. So Bithron, I mean, and of course, well, Bithron, uh, I think it's kind of equitable. You know, you say, okay, look, I'll get, I'll buy the files. 
you guys print the miniatures. Because like you said, as uh, now of course if you do the if you sign up for the Patreon stuff, those same bundles that maybe are 60 to 80 bucks are more like 10, 15 bucks. Uh, I think Grand Oracle and maybe Valfera could confirm something like that. I believe that's how it is. I don't really get too many entire bundles outside of Patreon things. Look at that. It's a big difference right there, right? Uh, so Bithron, let's take the average Lord of the Rings release. Uh, let, let's just say printing goes ever on, or or Diwali or whatever. Uh, you know, a typical army release. Okay, so, so chapter thirty-nine, whatever uh, printing goes ever on is doing. I think it's ten bucks on the Patreon, but on my mini factory, that same bundle might be forty, fifty, sixty bucks or something. I could be wrong, but I think so. So Sheza <laughs> also adopts that. Uh, getting the resin. Now, what is that? That is a. Uh, that is quite the print bed, Sheza. That is one nifty print bed. Uh, what did you say? Twelve by twelve inches there. So yeah, Bithron, that that's something to look into because okay, let's put it this way. You could let's just throw out fifty bucks. It seems like that's kind of the average bundle, although I've seen sixty and like you said one was eighty or something like that. Let's just okay, let's throw throw sixty. Let's say the average bundle is sixty bucks. You could potentially do at least five Patreons for that much, even if they're fifteen bucks. You know, maybe a couple are 10, one is 15, or a couple are 10, a couple are 15. You you could get yourself almost five or, you know, at least five of those, maybe six. And and the nice thing is, you do it one month. And the, there's some that now, of course, there's loyalty rewards. Some of them are three months, some are six months, some of them are nine or 12 months, whatever. Getting some lights here on our uh, clone commandos. And we're going to use our micro blending brush here again. Hashtag no layers. Look at that. Uh, Grand Oracle, I am. Uh, well, this, uh, this next vehicle painting series, again, it's going to have a whole lot of freehand in it. Uh, essentially doing doing this, right? So we're going to be doing this type of freehand on there. Uh, and other symbols and that sort of stuff, too. Also brighter colors, less with the weathering. Yeah, so Bitsaran, you're looking at that one at 80 bucks. If you were to put all of the Lord of the Rings ones that I support together, now some of them are more expensive than when I started. You could pretty much combine all the Lord of the Rings Patreons that I do, and that's basically what they equal in one month. And that also includes welcome packs. So when you do a Patreon thing, not only are you getting, okay, what is the October release, but you're getting the welcome pack too, which is usually about as many files as a whole nother release. So in some cases, you might be getting 30, 40-ish files or so just by signing up, especially for the first time. So Grand Oracle pretty much sums it up right there. You know, typical subscription, ten to fifteen bucks. Some are less. I think there was one I was doing. Now it might not be that anymore, but I swear it was seven bucks. A weird price. But and maybe it was a different currency. Yeah, it might have been ten, you know, whatever in their currency, but in mine only seven, I guess, something like that. And then, of course, Bithran, you always have the files. 
so I mean, well, they're thinking long term. If there is, like, like Grand Oracle says, if who knows, maybe, maybe one day they do actually come up with resin that's not quite so nasty. But Sheza now, uh, I guess that. Well, the next question is. Uh, have they ever printed out terrain on that? Or is it kind of your largest of your busts, dragons, big critters? All right. I'm going to grab me something. Oh, we'll use uh, maybe this. It's a little bit of a blending brush. So, again, see, we got some rough areas. They were just going to do a little bit of tap tap with a totally clean brush, and now that is absolutely smooth. I am also going to do this now that we've kind of gotten into this. We're not doing the pre-glaze anymore. Let's get ourselves a smidge closer, shall we? Let's pull this, this away. Like this. So yeah, Bithron, just uh, something to consider, because I was surprised. I, I think part of it is I always get uh, emails, you know, from, well, ironically enough, from the guys that I support saying, oh, get the bundle 40% off or whatever. Ah, okay, so yeah, well, uh, actually, I'm just wondering, because uh, I was... Well, that, that Boromir costume that I wanted to do, you could print out the horn. You could potentially even print out the shield. Because you could have uh, you could have the wood texture. You could still have the the boss on there and all the, the edge trim and everything else. And I think it would be lighter, that's for sure. Oh, and that's the other thing, uh, uh, sorry, Bithron, like, like, uh, Grand Oak was saying, sometimes, uh, you just have to wait, and it'll be so-and-so will have a 60, 70 percent off their My Mini Factories or whatever. Uh, so, I, I, yeah, that, you know, Grand Oracle, I think that's just what kind of brought it to mind, is I keep seeing the Diwali sale. So, now, I think... Are they showing those as glowy? Yeah, let me let me see. I'm just gonna look at my image here. Uh not so much, but some. Okay. Now of course that bitrun would be fantastic if right now they were having kind of a bundle sale or something like that. But again, it's a, again, something to think about. Do we, okay, we're going to gonna take our light here. Got ourselves an edge over there. A little bit of that down here. Uh, and we'll do this. More of our light here. Uh, so, Valfair, if you wanted to post your dragon, I, I know that you posted uh, another work in progress on the instas there of your other figure that you are working on. And now, uh, again, I might... Uh, I suppose, you know what, maybe, maybe I do try to get the stupid Ender 3 working, because it's here. If it, if it just proves to be useless and not work at all, well, then we just, okay, we get rid of it, and I actually try to get a working FDM printer. I might just give that one a shot after all. Hey there, speaking of terrain, 
Speaking of printing out terrain. Hey there, Blazing Tree Terrain. Actually, Blazing Tree Terrain. We were talking about the uh, the explosion markers and such, and I had a whole bunch of these for bolt action. I need to actually make some more here for... So you can see that one by the second Rohan building back there. But I need a whole bunch of those for, for our Lord of the Rings, but... Uh, Yeah, I've got to make me some more of those. But I'm wondering, uh, burning trees. And, and uh, do I do I get a couple of the uh, the little tea lights up in the tree, or do I have some other kind of mechanism up in the tree? To, to try and kind of like simulate that that fire going on. Yeah, blazing tree. It, it's always shocking because when you're working on them, they just they really look like nothing. And and even uh, as you're trying to get the paint on the the stuffing there, right, the fiber stuff. Even then, it doesn't really look like much of anything. Then you get that little bit of the tea light going, and all of a sudden, whammo, it comes, literally comes to life. Very impressive. Gee whiz, uh, Bithron, I was just thinking for something like Battletech. Well, that, that's the advantage of the small scale, right? You could make dozens of those things with just a fraction of the amount of material. Although I am starting to think that... Uh, oh, here, let me get my little blending brush going. Little pull it over this way. Yeah, just a tiny bit that way. Same over here. And we need our light up along that top edge there. that the tea lights, they're not going to be any smaller. So you're, you're going to have some mega explosions for your battle tech, though. I have seen, I could swear I've seen people do something like almost like the equivalent of a nuclear explosion in, in battle tech scale. It's two or three feet high. So yeah, the ones that I got were the typical, the average tea light. Right? It's kind of a little round thing with a little, little candle shape. You can't get greedy with those and kind of leave those on. Although, they probably use that same battery. I'll have to look and see if these tea lights use the same kind of the little tiny round batteries that I use in some of my other lights that are even a little bit bigger than that. I can only imagine those tea lights use only one of them. Yeah, Blazing Tree, there's kind of that balance of just how much of the, uh, well, the darker gray slash black do you put sort of on that top level? And how much do you put on the bottom levels? Because I've, I've kind of seen it go both ways, right? Where Putting too much on the bottom level really sort of cancels out some of the effect. And then kind of the other way around, too, where there's just there's not enough there. Now, this is a bit of a reflected light here. Yeah, so Blazing Tree, I'm just thinking, okay, uh -huh, if you wanted to have trees on fire... How how much time do you invest in the LED portion of that as opposed to, say, the fiber quotient to that? An interesting question that may just have to be done in a tutorial series. Flaming trees. I mean, obviously we can have burned trees, which I've never done that tutorial either. Wow, okay. Uh, Bithron. 
hate hate to do that. <laughs> if you could shoot me a reminder about burnt trees, burning trees tutorial. Uh, something tells me this needs to be. What the heck is this in his hand? Some kind of a grenade. Either that or it's a cricket ball. I'm going to say since he's wearing all white, it's a cricket ball. We'll just say he's wearing cricket armor. Oh, it's been a long, long, long time since I last played cricket. Thanks, Bitron. So, uh, we could say... We could say that uh, this guy here might have dropped it uh, in the forest somewhere. <laughs> and, uh, well, next thing you know, there's a blazing forest all behind them, even in the wintertime. Yeah, blazing tree. Uh, I, I just, I didn't even know this was in his hand, and I looked over there to paint it, and went, what the heck is this stupid little ball in his hand? I mean, it literally is a little ball. It, if it looked anything like the, you know, your typical pine cone grenade, obviously not going to look like your uh, potato masher version. So Grand Oracle says flaming trees around the next minute. Now, of course, if we're going to do that just with painting, well, we, we did that. We, we could uh, take the heavy gloss gel and sculpt flames. In theory, you could sculpt the heavy gloss gel around a tea light or an LED light of some kind. I'm just saying... Now, the one thing is, uh, once that light burns out, there there goes your, goes all your work. Unless there is some form of a battery at, attached to it that could be replaced. All right, again, uh, this thing, we're not even an hour in. 56 minutes, that's how long we've been working on that. Uh, so yeah, blazing tree. Would I? Uh, and I didn't even have these at the time. Where's our Easterling building? Here we go. So see those uh, on the front portico, if you want to call it that. Those little uh, things in the wall. Uh, now I've got printed torches for that. Either printed torches or uh, oh gosh, what it not sconces, braziers. Yes, I have three D printed braziers to hopefully use as. Uh, Flamey things for our Easterling buildings. Because, uh, reasons. Alright, where'd you go? Where are you hiding? You're over here. Again, really easy to do all this and have all these uh, smooth blends, right? Without having to work so hard. Hashtag not working hard. Uh, Grand Oracle, <laughs> it's kind of crazy, right? Well, of course, uh, well, I guess if it's white scars, uh, obviously you'd have to do all of the uh, the insignia and then the areas that are red, but that's kind of minimal, wouldn't you say? Now yeah, I could slam through quite the army like this. Uh, blazing tree. Actually, I guess there's a new Neptune printer. I don't know if it's supposed to be the Neptune 4 something. And you're supposed to be able to pause the printing. Quite literally set in an LED light or a set of LED lights or another material. Maybe magnets or something. Then you press go on the printer and it starts printing again. Only now with that stuff embedded inside it. There's my blending brush again. See, we're just going to slap that on there. Take our blending brush to it. So much easier. Uh, 
Oh, let's see. So Fat Dragon Games and also Milestone Heroes. They've got some terrain that uh, features... Oh gosh, I, I, what's the one that did their like dwarf tiles or something, or you know, not dwarf tiles, but uh, dungeon tiles? And there's there's some where there's like a little, you can tell there's a little attachment area in this the wall, and that's where you maybe put a torch or a sconce or something, different colors. I think it's Dwarven Forge, maybe. Uh, yeah, Blazing Tree. Uh, I have that Ender 3 that's been sitting here since day one. I think it makes sense to just, okay, see if I can get that assembled. See if I can get it working. If it doesn't work, trash it. Get get a real one or a, a newer one. That hopefully should be easier to work. I would assume, well, we all know what the first three letters in assume are. But I'm going to assume that FDM printers are easier to set up than the old Ender 3s. I cannot imagine there's quite that much hassle involved in a brand new printer uh, of this variety, especially with self-leveling resin printers. So yeah, Blazing Tree uh, with all of the terrain that needs to be printed out here. I've, I've got Easterling terrain from, I think, the printing goes ever on. I've got, I think, Army of the Dead terrain maybe from them too. Kurz look, Moria terrain, Diwali has terrain, Asgiliath, Rivendell. Uh, so again, I have to hope that I have all the little parts for that. How's about we welcome in the master? That would be Realms Master. How you doing there, Realms Master? Oh, Amistig, great to see you too. So let's see, Amistig uh, says that the 5 plus was way better. Oh, MakerBot. Yeah, I've heard of MakerBot, too. So, everybody, please give Realms Master a follow. So, Realms Master, how the heck are you doing? I hope that you're doing sensational. Thank you so much for the raid. We are working on Star Wars Shatterpoint. We're doing the, not clone troopers, but the clone commandos on Tuesday. On our Makeup Monday stream, we did this from the same box. The it was at Plans and Preparation. The, actually, the first box where I used all the same type of basing. So this is the 3D printed Hoodoo Rocks from Make It Epic Basing. We got another one. Where the heck is... Uh, here, he, here she is. So this is another one. Just filmed this tutorial last night. Again, the same, uh, same Hoodoo Rocks. And here's another one of our Shatterpoint streams where we did uh, more Hoodoo Rocks. More Hoodoo Rocks there. Ah, thank you so much, uh, Blazing Tree. Uh, so again, uh, so again uh, let's see. We better give Realms Mastery a follow if you could. Then Realms Master, um, I hope that your stream was a blast. If you want to share anything that you are working on, on your stream, you got a uh, Discord links, Insta links, whatever. Let me see. Oh, hey, this old grouse, how you doing? Uh, thanks so much, this old grouse. It's I was just reminiscing that... And there's a whole little story to that, I believe. I don't, I don't know if Shatterpoint was the literal first figure that I painted when when I kind of went back to it in late May. But this was the very first stuff back in late May, early June. So that that's kind of, I don't know, there's, uh, there's always going to be a little special association with this stuff. And that that was kind of the, the reintroduction to the streaming. 
because I was wondering it's like why why is there for whatever reason a little a little special sentiment with these figs even though they're very very new right they're not like my Lord of the Rings stuff or whatever or bolt action or whatever but I guess it is that kind of association with being able to get back to that to, to something that I really 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 enjoy and that just uh, yeah there's that sort of association with it which uh, I mean that works for me but great to see this old grouse I just I wish that I could do uh, more hangouts with folks for sure now until again that's the house stuff until that starts to get down to a slow roar I don't think I'll be able to do those just yet I think it uh, may be more like November or something like that nope no not that for a Again, we'll use our micro micro blending grid, and all we're doing here again is uh, it's not this, it's straight up and down. So not not smearing it or smudging it. We're just up and down like that. Uh, Grand Oracle. I, I uh, well look at me, right? You know, there was a time where I said, oh yeah, the the uh, Sonic Mini 4K is fine. But having something to compare it to, and finding the uh, the Sonic stuff wanting, right? Now, there was a time that I just okay, yeah, I think it's I think it's okay. There's nothing wrong with the uh, Sonic stuff. But then I start comparing it to other things, and I say, well, maybe it's not complete trash, but there's other just this other stuff seems to be better. Jaw seems to be a bit better. Now here, let me see if I can get a little more of my lighter tone in here. Also over here. We'll do, oh yeah, we gotta get our light on this edge too, over here. Oh, gee whiz. Completely forgot about this. And you know, we might uh, reintroduce a few little darks, maybe just to sharpen up some edges in here. Also got to figure out with it. You know, I will get some blue into that. Yeah. First, though, a radiant turquoise. A little, not that much. It's been a while since I actually used this, so we got to break it down here mm. with some thinner. And uh, good, we have a little Prussian blue over here. I'm actually gonna. Grab my paper towel, gonna get some of this out of here. And that's going to go in here. And then we're actually going to use some of that out here on, uh, I'm just guessing this is a blaster. I think that's pretty much what they call all the guns in uh, Star Wars. I just uh, keep thinking Imperial Guard and uh, and the laser pointers. Yeah, that's mostly our radiant turquoise there. Any more this way? Sure. No, 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 no. Let me go back to the indigo here. Yeah, more of a bluish gray here, I think. Yep. 
I'll probably uh, maybe do some more indigo also too on well on the blaster thing. Start to get that again, kind of a, a bluish gray. Now, I, I do know for sure that it's going to be it's going to be a little while before I can even think about setting up the Ender Three because there's even if I had it all together and even running there's nowhere for it to be again the garage project stopped everything else and then when the garage project got stopped that continued the stoppage on the other stuff uh, this is again a little bit of our bluish gray there all right, let me think. I'm going to try the radiant violet here. Uh, some of our pre-glaze, that's mostly the Van Dyke brown. I don't need something incredibly dark, but what I, I would like to do is uh, maybe get an edge or two here. Uh, yeah, Grand Oracle, uh, I have to say of only those two Mono X printers, I believe the number of times I've re-leveled both of them since I first got them going again was once. And that was for one of them. And that was only because it seemed like the screws had gotten a little bit loose on the uh, the metal build plate. That's the only reason, otherwise I wouldn't have touched it. This needs more of our light there. Then again, our blending brush here. And again, see, we this is a hard to reach area. But I really want to sit there and try and do layer after layer after layer in an area that's really hard to reach. Now, I know I've mentioned this before on previous streams that I used to paint the uh, the figure separately. It would be on well, on a pin on a dowel rod, and then the base separately, and then I realized, well, first of all, there was a ton of stuff I was painting that you couldn't see. And it even also, it, sometimes it led to, well, that area really should have been darker, but because there was no miniature sitting on the base, I actually kind of did it as if there was nothing there. Because that guess that's what you're, you're going to kind of do that. Uh, so, Armo, thank you so much for sharing the Patreon page link. And again, I just put the new tutorial up today. This is painting, oh, guess what? Another Shatterpoint figure from this same box. Uh, except this time it was doing object source lighting without any fluorescence. It's been a very, 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 very long time since I filmed a video like that. And then we were doing a little bit of experimentation there with our... Uh, ultramarine blue now here since we don't have any object source lighting on this we can maybe go a little smidge lighter with some of our highlights on the uh, on the hoodoo rocks again those are 3d printed from make it epic basing actually these you could probably really get away with uh, FDM printer wouldn't you say grand oracle I mean, they have all the striations in them, don't they? Already. So yeah, you could. I could probably print these really, really big. Now, now, granted, there's that elven terrain that I really would like to print with, say, the Mono X because it's it's elven. You know, it's got all the really delicate little details in it. I'm going to try and get this... Oh, yeah, we really can get that lighter. Where's my blending brush again? And then, let me see if I can get the light that's right along the edge here of the eye. The vision slit. There. 
also maybe a little lighter here as well. Starting to think about a little reflected light over here. Uh, so one hour and 14 minutes ago, uh, this had no no paint on it. Where's our where is our other guy here? There he is. So that's uh that is what he looked like right there. And Grand Oracle. Now the other thing too. And this, well, it also falls under that infinite amount of free time, which we all don't have, right? If if I was, if I could do some stuff in Blender or Mixer or whatever, maybe try to uh, even isolate the parts of, say, that elven terrain that most could use, something like the resin printer, do the bulk of it with the FDM, I don't know how that well that would work, but uh, maybe it would. Yeah, not. Uh, I haven't worked with any of those softwares. Uh, needless to say, if I am ever able to work with those and start to learn how to use them, you can, you can bet those will be. However, whatever way I can do, I'll try and make those as part of a. Uh, printing workshop series uh, so this old grouse I haven't actually had a chance to to play it yet uh, I know a bit while we were talking about you had a chance to kind of try it out and obviously a very sis different system to Marvel Crisis Protocol but uh, definitely didn't get enough to really really sample it per se Uh, so this old grouse. Now this old grouse. Did you paint all the terrain? Is that's the other thing that I need to do? Is uh, just get the starter set terrain put together and and see if I can maybe do some uh, videos on painting that stuff as well. But I haven't had a chance to try that out yet. But hopefully you are enjoying that. Let me see if I can't bring in a little more. I actually can make that incrementally lighter. And get me a little bit more of my light. A couple parts of this. I'm going to come back with straight up the uh, indigo. Yeah, we'll do that, but later. A wee bit later here. Oh, let me get the more light up on top there. Gale tip, nice to see you again. So gale tip, I hope that the uh, week has been going reasonably well for you. And of course, if you got anything you want to share, I think you do. I could swear you just either did a Facebook post or a uh, or an Insta post just the other day. Yeah, this old grouse, and of course, uh, one of the weirdest things is to see the, well, your Martyr 1s, basically, right? Where you're taking a, a Lorraine, and you're sticking you're sticking the howitzer in there. And it just, it really looks like it's going to tip over, just moving around, much less after you fired it. This is one of the most more ludicrous things. So Gale Tip, great to see you again. And, and of course, again, you want to share anything in the in the chat there, stuff you've been working on. Oh, that would be sensational. I, I don't know if you've got yourself any uh, mega projects that you're trying to get done for maybe Adepticon. What else do we got going on over here? Yeah, that's so. Uh, Check a little more of that light there. We'll go back now with the indigo. Let's see what difference uh, that's going to make. So, yeah, uh, this old grouse, uh, 
20, uh, one hour and 21 minutes. I know you, it's a huge surprise, right? That it went from this to this in 82 minutes now. And a level 1 hype train. But we'll, we'll get to our hoodoo rock. Yeah, let, let's set this set. Let's just start messing with some hoodoo rock over there. Yeah, now we're starting to throw in a little bit of those lighter tones on the hoodoo rocks, which were, speaking of 3D printing, Make it epic basing. Fantastic stuff. Actually, I do have a video. Well, it's uh, it was called Basing Shatterpoint. This is one of the figures that we did. Oh, look at that. More, more of our hoodoo rock. So thank you so much, Armored Wolf, for posting a link uh, to, the, uh, to the GoFundMe campaign. Everybody that's contributed to that, it is uh, much appreciated, uh, especially with all the madness that's uh, going on here in the last week, all the craziness with the house project that did not need to happen whatsoever. We appreciate everybody that's done that. It helps a ton. Trying to find me a little bit more my light stuff there. I could come back. Yes, I think I'll come back and kind of uh, rework some of the darker elements of our uh, hoodoo rock there. Now, the other thing, too, you can, and of course, I just I keep forgetting to do it. You can mirror stuff. So I could take this hoodoo rock. I think there's, let, let's say there's 10 different files. If you mirror them, it's supposed to look different enough that it looks like you've got 20 different pieces instead of just, oh, well, okay. It's those same 10 pieces over and over and over again. Uh, well, Designs by L, I salute you for uh, for all of your health care providing there because that is... Uh, and that's one of those things that uh, it's it's a it's not a once in a while kind of thing, right? It gets a it can be a bit of a daily stress, daily strain. So the, I appreciate you doing that, and it just uh, shows all kinds of uh, generosity and courage there to be doing that. Is that those things they're they're difficult on well at least uh, four different levels. Yeah, they and they never get easier. Just looking to can pick up a little bit more light here. I uh, probably will put some kind of uh, wasteland-ish type tufts on here, which I actually did myself. Uh, so this old grouse, I've been desperately also wanting to print them a little bit bigger. Uh, not just for 72 mil figs and stuff like that, but even here it would be nice, well, with larger scale figs like this, to be able to go maybe this tall. So you know, add another three quarters of an inch to it or something like that. Everybody please check out the link that Geltip posted. Is that an Instagram link? Yes, it is. Everybody, so please go check out the Instagram link that Gail Tip posted. Now what I will do here is uh, I'm going to put that well it's not the blackest black it's uh, sort of the poor cousin to that however that's going to determine what's going to happen over here. So that's this stuff again this is not the black 3.0 but believe it or not it actually covers better so it makes uh, you basically put this down first and then the uh, then the blackest black over the top of it so here we're just going to put a little bit of this uh, around the base. Let me see if I got something that'll work here. Maybe you. Ah, uh, Ogel tip. That's fabulous. Glad that you could do that. <clears throat> now what I'm hoping to do <clears throat> at Adepticon is to uh, is to have my camera there, and there'll be a monitor. And I'll use the fabulous uh, headset mic that uh, Armored Wolf found. More like a loudspeaker. 
and I'll just kind of do continuous demos. I'm not doing any classes at Adepticon because I really I just can't be shut off in a room because needless to say a few folks are going to want to talk. So we got because we we got some things that we'll want to cover and talk about. So I, I want to be out there as much as possible and and just available. And uh, we thought that would be the best way. We will add a little more of our light here on his uh, shoe, boot, toes, whatever here. Well, you know what? That needs to be a little lighter. We're going to take our blending brush again. There. Ah, uh, so that must be uh, that must be Mountain Time, because I think Pacific Time it's only uh, nine thirty-two. Yes, but I don't even know it. To me, Mountain Time is a little bit like those half-hour time zones in Australia. I'm not quite sure where that exactly begins and ends. What do we got going? On? Oh, ooh, that should be dark there. You know what? Fine, I'll just. To use this, and I'll get me some indigo here. That's why there was no edge over here. It's like, what the heck? Minor details should have had that dark in place. All right, good enough. So that's uh, Eastern time zone for Andro. A little bit of Central time zone here. Hey there, Elite. Great to see you back. Ah, it is mountain time. All right, Bithron. I'm glad that uh, at least I could get that right. I mean, we could even could even as uh, part of it as the fleet that took part in the uh, in the Shadow War. Now, uh, Doji. Uh, I don't know. I think it would work well because. Uh, well, we did make use of our radiant gray, so the radiant violet, radiant green, little dry brushy thing over the top. Uh, Pre-glaze couldn't have been more simple. Van Dyke brown. Basically it. Yeah, this, it was Van Dyke brown. So that that's, uh, could definitely be a plan. Uh, boy, recoil, great mimes think alike because you know what just you know what popped through my head. I meant you know the whole shadow war thing. Of well, also too, you know, recoil. I would imagine there's got to be 3D printable shadow ships. I mean, not that I couldn't just do that with green stuff or uh, epoxy sculpt or something and some wire. But uh, I don't know. Maybe there's uh, there's some printable shadow ships, and we uh, we print out a couple of bits, and we have those uh, combined together. Because I just I remember uh, I just that had uh, that was a really fun scene when you saw those because they really made it to you know that the shadows were something. The, the, uh, now, of course, maybe now, of course, they would seem a little bit less intense, but at that time, look at that. That was another edge that was all kind of not sharp. Really sharpened up that edge, didn't we? All right, get rid of that little bit of thinner there. I just see uh, a couple of edges we need to sharpen up. And that's the nifty thing, right? You... You blast into these so fast that you have lots of time for maybe some um, some of the more delicate type stuff. Thank you so much for doing that, uh, doing the clip there, Bithron. Now, three hours and 52 minutes ago, these had no paint on them. Well, three hours, 52 minutes, and 29 seconds. No paint. These were just primer. As in, they were just gray primer. That, that was it. We're using traditional oil paints like usual. All right, well, thank you so much, Zhang. Appreciate that. And again, if you want to share anything in the chat, you know, uh, well, pictures of your your builds there, please go ahead and share those. 
So yes, regular artist oil paints out of the tubes. Now Bithron, uh, oh no, no, that was your Conquest stuff that had the blue skin tone. Those were your trolls, right? Yeah, that was, that was your Conquest stuff that I'm thinking about. Let's see if I can get a little, yeah, there we go. Okay, that was a little too dark. And that is a little too big over there. We're going to take that down a little. This is this big old white dot sitting right there. Uh, nope, Chewy. Not at all. The Again, the, the operative ingredient in oil paint, uh, linseed oil, safflower oil. Uh, there's, there's a tiny little bit of thinner right that we use to thin them down a little bit but uh, actually they're gentler on your brushes because they're not going to dry in there yes the, the oil paints almost it's like it restores your brushes uh, so the trolls the ogre and the jotnar all have the blue skin tones I thought so uh, grand orico I actually well I have a bunch of the small a bunch of the small ships that need to get painted up but then there's other ones that I, I still have to assemble. Well, there's the Dwarf Fleet that I haven't touched yet. Uh, so Doji, it is a, uh, it's a high-quality, odorless thinner. Now, in this case, it's uh, from Speedball is the primary brand. Mona Lisa is kind of the sub-brand right there. So again, that is odorless paint thinner. If you're in outside the U.S., you can always, uh, the MIG Ammo stuff or the uh, AK Interactive, you could use those. They have a little bit more smell to them, I think, than, say, the, uh, the, the stuff from Mona Lisa. Uh, so thank you so much, Bithron. Appreciate that. And like Doji says, you want to use that high-quality thinner. And we don't use that to clean the brushes. That's what this is for. And oh, well, in, in a pinch, look at that. Works for dried acrylic, too. Not hazardous, no vapor. So, again, that's what cleans your brushes. Or soapy water, as in dish soap and some warm water. That's That'll get that stuff out of there real quick. And Doji also has uh, said that you can use the Windsor Newton Sansador if you're also in the Europe. Oh, hey, Doji, gee whiz. Gerstecker. If you could do me a favor and post that uh, linky there to Gersh Decker. And again, I apologize if I am mispronouncing that. But that is another, uh, especially in the continental EU. So yeah, th th this stuff again, it's the your operative ingredients in there. Well, safflower oil, linseed oil, walnut oil. Now, the nice thing about the oils is they are extremely durable. I almost never put any kind of varnish or anything like that on the miniatures. Actually, the only time I ever do it is if the it's a color that has a little bit of a shine to it. Ah, that's fantastic, Chewie. What do we got here? Ah, yeah, I'll lighten that up a little more. A little bit more. So there is the Gerstecker link. Again, thank you so much, Doji. Sorry, uh, sorry I made you post all those links. But that is much appreciated. Let's see if I can't sneak a little bit more of my light back in there. Uh, again, this is our, our liner brush here. None of this, right? No grabbing on the ferrule. We do this. Right, we have a light grip on that brush. Gives us a nice gentle brush stroke. Also means, look at this. I can literally get the brush all the way through there and still actually be able to paint stuff. Uh, not so much if I've got the death grip on the brush, right? Yeah, that's uh, not, not quite so helpful. Wow, I guess I, I can go a little bit lighter on that. Oh, Doji, you have a good day at work there. Uh, well, I guess the next time we see you, it's going to be uh, 
it's a, it's a bakery run. Yes. The Saturday bakery run. See you then. I could go a little later down. No, we'll just uh, wait on that with this. We'll continue that edge. I'm also going to throw a little bit of light over here. Where's that teensy blending brush? Our micro blending brush. Where did you run off to? There you are. Again, tiny little brush. No paint on it. We take this and we just do a little bit of tap, 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 like so. On this side over here, I'm gonna do the same thing. I might see if I can take that little Van Dyke brown mix over, or a little bit. Let's get let's get her asphaltum out there as well. Let's get that out there too. In a matter of speaking, how's about we darken that edge up? There we go. That looks a whole lot sharper. It's a whole lot sharper there. Uh, same deal here. Whoops. That's not... Uh, right there. Again, the micro-blending brush. Making a few little widgets. There we go. See that? We completely transformed what was going on there in a couple of seconds. It's all that it took. More of my dark. Rework the edge of the bottom edge of the helmet here. Never really did that. Oh yeah, definitely didn't do that over there. That's better. Now back there, that is in shadow, so I might just leave that be, but remember, we, we're still able to get some of our... Or is that just pre-glaze? That might even just be pre-glaze back there. Yeah. Oh, here's a. That's an edge that needs to be tightened up. All of the. Oh, yeah, here's a whole bunch of them here. And a whole bunch of them. There we go. And we'll take this. Ah, oh, yeah, that really cleans up a bunch of that. Very nicely. Another little weird funky edge on the back of his hand. Not anymore. So we started out with those all important darker colors. Then we take our makeup sponges. We wipe off some of it. It essentially creates what most folks would just call a xenothal. But we like to call it an active xenothal, which means that when we start to put those lighter mid-tones on via this, the filbert brush, well, it starts to blend immediately with them instead of just kind of painting over what would be tantamount to a zenithal, we're painting with it because it's still wet. All of the paint on both of these guys is still wet. At no point during this uh, stream, will any of this be dry? However, these guys, by tomorrow night at this time, I would, if they're not completely dry, they'll be well along the way there. If not all the way there, they'll be mostly dry by then. Why? Because we're not using a whole bunch of paint here. Even my 2D paintings, I just flashed one up on the screen not too long ago. Don't chuck a whole lot of paint on that either some ways it's almost approached more like a watercolor painting than an oil painting. This uh, part of the blaster, whatever that, just got a little too light. It was same as the fingers. Okay, well, I think we're good back there. What about this here? This, uh, this edge got a little funky. We're gonna take some of that away and now I think I'm gonna go either I'm going to maybe this mix here of fast matte white and a little bit of the radiant turquoise. Let's do that. 
Let um, me see. So there once was a clone named Lando who under his armor went commando. He said, I can run a lot faster while shooting my blaster because there's more room for my saber to go. So the king of limericks, the king of limericks strikes again. Uh, recoil uh, explaining the, the lore behind the uh, clone commandos here. Uh, well, Grand Oracle, thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for all the bitses, too. Appreciate that. And yes, we, we are hopefully that that solution that was offered today becomes the actual solution and it works the way I'm hoping that it will. So yes, we have we have puns, we have limericks, uh, as always here. Open night, open mic night in Wapleville. Mirth, both mirth and merriment, both of them combine. Also puppet shows, we did yes we did have puppet shows. Yes we have. And for all the folks, uh, I think we've maybe had some follows here. Uh, for whatever reason, we're just not getting our usual... Uh, Hello, uh, at, uh, hopefully, if I haven't missed, if I've missed anybody that has done the follow thing, uh, my apologies there. But uh, that, uh, that uh, doesn't seem to be sounding anymore. Which is weird, although I've been trying to look. I don't think there's been... I don't think there's been any, but maybe there has been. So again, if there's been follows, uh, for whatever reason, my alert for that is uh, not uh, doing its thing. And it should, because I just pressed on it, and we heard Gandalf there. Okay, yeah, I think that's a little bit better with our lights up right up there. Is there uh, a need to push this up? Well, yes, there is. And that is just a white stripe right there. We need to do something more than that. Also, that needs to get a little lighter up there. Yeah, that's better. Do we get it? Yeah, we do have some reflected light down there. Sure. Oh, yeah. Here we go. All right, I'm going to slap that on there. We'll take this landing brush here and we're just going to pull that right up and over so again a little bit of a reflected light here landing brush we do this working out just fine oh and uh back here maybe a little bit more with the with our light too why not do that Uh, so, Inganes, I hope that you're doing well. Great to see you again. I think uh, I think you came in just as the the big raid happened, and that that we appreciate that from the Zhang. What do we got here? We take our blending brush to this, clean up some of the ragged edges. Good to go there. Try and throw a little bit more of my light down in here. What is happening up here? I think we've got our edges set pretty well there. That should be a little lighter, maybe. Now this, I'm going to see if I can just, instead of a using some paint. I'll use the blending brush here. <clears throat> and the idea is we're just going to try and uh, steal away. Look at that. There's uh, no paint on that brush. That bit of our highlight line was too thick there. So what I do is I took this brush and I basically removed the paint. Yes, you can uh, definitely do that. You can definitely do that with the uh, fantastic oil paints for sure. 
I'm going to get a couple of, uh, a couple of Doriks now on the Hoodoo Rocks. Up here. Could almost do that, say, as, as a pin line wash tool, but this is maybe, I don't know, 70% of the way to a pin line wash, I suppose. One second here, just trying to get rid of some junk that's on the brush there. That's better. All right, let me... There we go. Some of that uh, from the initial dry brushy stuff that we did, we're going to... Again, tighten up some of these edges. That's what's nice, that a lot of the major stuff can be hit so quickly because now you have m more time left to get into this mode right here uh, so already I don't know if you heard me uh, say that I have uh, several sets of your your plastic cases there where it's what three levels high and usually the top level has the the six part divider in it I do kinda wish they had one versions of those where each level had that six thing divider whatever but uh, I also use for the carrying my miniatures around uh, I think Sterlite usually that's that's the company I always associate with those the lens there are like 11 by 14 by about 4 inches high and sometimes those will be stacked at least 7 feet high I think I've had them as high as 10 feet so there's the Pinterest link again check out the fabulous jewelry from Eric and wife and then uh, then do the follow thing uh, now, Arid, will you be streaming again on Friday, or will maybe Saturday be your next stream? And I guess, with the, uh, well, with the dreaded eggs not not popping up quite so much, hopefully that's making it easier to stream uh, more frequently. Mm, what do we got going? Yeah, we'll do that too. There's another one, another one there. So we're just picking out some uh, some edges here on our hoodoo rocks. Yeah, this uh, there too. It's almost a little bit like what we did with the uh, birch bark. Yeah. Probably should get it. Oh, gee whiz. Yeah, we can definitely get some more dark down. And it is uh, kind of a shadow areas anyway. Now that does, that is real close to a pin line wash there. That's more like 85% of the way to a pin line wash. Just a Van Dyke Brown, maybe a little bit of the Mars Black. Again, still utilizing the Gamblin Mars Black just to continue the testing of it. Uh, nothing wrong with the Black Spinel, it's just I don't uh, have that here. That actually ended up at the place where I'm doing the murals. Oh, that's good, Arid. Because, well, I mean, those kind of things, right? Uh, and you, s you just kind of need those for not just tools, but all of these, all of the different materials. you got to be able to see them. You have to be able to kind of tuck them in there and get them uh, tucked away. Of course, staying uh, nice and dust-free, of course, that's always good, too. Because, yeah, getting them the direct is uh, certainly always going to be better than cutting out that middleman, right? Hmm, that might be a little too much dark there. So, blending brush comes along, spreads that out, and now it's... Uh, not quite so dark. We're going to sharpen up this edge a bit. Oh, yeah, this one too. So you see, we, we darken that up. Take our blending brush and we just sort of pull that off to the side. 